Okay, so I now have the exterior of my bag, which I've got wrong sides out, and my beautiful lining, which I have right side out. And I'm gonna pop my lining inside of my exterior. Now this is probably um, the opposite way around for a lot of people, uh, for a lot of patterns, but that's because the lining is smaller than the exterior and the lining is smaller than the exterior so that it fits properly because there's nothing that bugs me more than a really baggy lining. So that's why we've got a completely different separate construction method for our lining than we have for the exterior. Um, that also allows for us not to have too thick seams because um, if you've got uh, corner seams here on the on the lining as well that means you've got an awful lot of bulk in the corners our seams on the lining are at the side so they'll sit centrally so they're offset against the exterior seams so I'm going to place my lining inside of my exterior and I'm making sure that the pockets are towards the flap now the flap I've tucked in so that's the back of my bag and I want my pockets to be at the back of my bag it's a personal preference but if you if you prefer them not to be then turn it the other way around now what I'm going to do, we, if we made marks on the um, centre of the top of our side panels and I'm going to match my open seams of my lining with those marks. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Then I'm going to go to each of the corners. I'm just going to make sure that my fabric on the seam allowance for the exterior is still open to keep the bulk um, to a very minimum and I'm just going to clip those corners. I'm going to do the same thing on this end. I've got all sorts of things in here, none of them are what I meant to have in there. store all sorts of stuff in. An old grommet, a screwdriver, a machine clip, all the things that I really don't need at this point. I just need clips, which is what's supposed to be in here. So let's just... Uh... So I'm keeping those seam allowances open. Um, I know we press them open, but sometimes they don't stay open very well. It depends how thick your fabric is. Um, but I've opened them all up and that sits nicely and then I'm just going to put the clips um, I'm just going to ease the rest of that top edge around the top of the bag this should fit absolutely perfectly if you've measured correctly there will be no gapes no areas where you've got big sort of openings that shouldn't be there or puckering or anything like that As long as you've been accurate with your cutting. If you're not, uh, if you're a bit slapdash with cutting, that's when you've got a problem sometimes. Okay, so we've got, let's get rid of my detritus. And just two seconds, I've got something coming up on my. <laughs> that's it. Right, so. I've got as many clips in as I feel comfortable with. If you want to put more in, then that's absolutely fine. I'm going to top stitch around the outside um, edge, or I'm going to stitch around the outside edge using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So all the way around the top. Now, because I don't have a free arm, I have to do mine. I stitch mine from inside of the bag. So it's quite difficult for you to see because I'm actually stitching inside. Um, but I think a lot of people that have either industrials or flatbeds will, will be fairly familiar with this. It's not a, um, an unusual thing to do. So just removing the clips as we stitch. sit on so I'm just going to have to wait for that to cool down on there. 
So you can just kind of manipulate your bag. Even though it's got foam in it, it will come back. And that's why we use foam, because it will come back, it will bounce back. If you use something like Decaville, it won't, it will go wrinkly. From kind of the bag from kind of coming out from underneath the needle as you start to um, manipulate it round. And it is a question just kind of keep going and keep pushing and keep pulling until it's until you've got stitched all the way round. And of course, this is only really a problem if you've not got a free on. stitches and trim out that foam and it's really important that you do this on this top um, edge because when you go to top stitch if you've left your foam in you will find it's very very thick and bulky and I've done everything I can within the construction of this bag to keep to mean that so that you can actually sew this in thicker fabrics and still be able to sew it on a domestic machine um, by offsetting all the seams. It means that you've never got like eight or nine layers to go over. Um, so it, it is achievable on a domestic machine, um, but you do need to make sure that you trim out the seam, uh, the foam out the seam allowances. I know a lot of people that like to just not put it in the seam allowance in the first place and use fusible foam. Um, I'm not a fan of fusible foam. I find that it wrinkles badly and then doesn't unwrinkle. There's no way of kind of repairing it once it's wrinkled, once you've turned it. Um, so I don't use a uh, fusible foam at all. Only ever sewing because I just like the finish better. It is a personal preference. Um, and if you choose to use a fusible foam, and it, then, you know, buyer beware. I just find it... I just don't like it and I've tried several in the interest of research because one has to. So I'm just removing the basting stitches all the way around. stitches I can then take out the foam on the seam allowances to the next page of the pattern because I can't remember what order I did things in. I know where I'm at. I know where I thought I was at, but I just wanted to make sure. Careful when you're doing this. You don't want to trim. You don't want to um, cut into your stitching. 
she says. Now, if you've used um, a faux leather for your exterior and for your internal facing, you may need to, or you may wish to, should I say, grade that top seam. So you might want to um, take out a little bit of the um, seam allowance for the exterior piece of fabric. So if you're using faux leather, something that's um, a non-woven, um, something that doesn't fray, you can trim your seam allowance down a little bit extra um, on one of the sides and that gives you basically it means that you're um, graduating all those pieces of fabric that are in that seam so it makes it less bulky so there we go I've trimmed out my foam um, I don't need to braid any seams on this and I'm using fabric so it's absolutely fine um, what I'm going to do is pull the lining out from inside I'm going to put my hand into that hole that's at the bottom of the lining not through the pocket but the bottom of the lining and I'm just going to I'm going to push my the exterior into my hand so there's my hand and I'm just kind of pushing the corner of the exterior into my hand and people refer to this as birthing um, and it's as much pulling as it is pushing which is not quite like birthing well one would hope not anyway um, I've had three babies and they've never been pulled out so uh, but it is it's a combination of pulling and pushing and sometimes an element of swearing sadly no drugs um, and what you're going to just do is you're going to try and ease the bag the exterior of your bag out through that um, aperture that you made at the bottom of your Badge is caught on the side of my lining. That's not helpful. And there we go. And I'm going to use my hand to push out the bottom corners of my exterior bag. Because you can see it's all kind of dented where it's been turned. And I want those to sit nicely. So I'm just using my fingers inside to push that out. It's been pressed really well, so actually this, the, all these side seams are sitting really nicely and squarely, which is what I wanted. So now I can fold my lining back into my bag. So I'm pushing the lining inside and there you can see there, this is the lining and you can see it over the top of my um, exterior. So in the same way as we did before, I'm just gonna use my fingers and I'm gonna roll that lining so that the facing panel is sitting inside of the bag and I'm going to clip it In most cases, I would say to have the seam sitting on the top. In this instance, the seam is sitting slightly to the inside of the bag. It means that you won't see any of that facing panel from the outside. Um, in my case, that's it particularly important because I've actually, the facing panel that I've used is a slightly different design to the outside. The reason for that is because what I've actually used here for my fabrics are 
um, is a cushion panel. So it had two panels, about 16 by 16, something like that, with a sort of a decorative edge, which is what this is, this uh, greeny bit around the outside. So I had enough to cut um, my two exterior panels and my side panels and my flap, but there wasn't enough to cut my um, interior facing panel. So hence I've used I've used what was it, what is the edge of the of the fabric for my facing panels, but it's not obviously the same design. Ideally, you would have your facing panels the same design as your exterior. Um, it means that then, if you don't, if anybody looks in, they can't see the lining. I don't know. I don't like it when the bag's got a flap, and at the sides of the flap you can see the lining. I just think it looks a bit. Well, I just don't like it. Um, so now, having clipped all the way around, you can see I've done that. I'm just going to double check how much thread I have on my bobbin because I am going to. Oh, that's a bit low. I think I'm going to. Um, hold on, what am I doing? I think I am going to re-thread a new bobbin because that seems like it's not got a lot on there and I don't want to get caught out halfway round my top stitching playing bobbin lotto and losing certainly not on video I would like to say that I have many times played bobbin lotto and lost as indeed most bag makers do on occasions we get a bit bold or we forget to check. Sorry, just having to wait for this to to load. There we go. Thread the machine. Not so quick at threading this one because it threads slightly differently to mine. So I'm still kind of conscious of the fact that I need to thread it properly, else I won't stitch properly. I will say though, this is an excellent machine. I've never sewn on a Husqvarna before, um, and I really like it. It's a very nice machine to stitch on. Um, and it was linked to me because of mine being broken, um, for which I'm very grateful. ready to go right in the same way as I couldn't I can't use a free arm and stitch on the outside for my um, joining my lining to my exterior I can't do my top stitching um, the, I have to do my top stitching from inside as well so I'm just going to pull my flap out of the way so I'm not stitching over it and again I'm going to do my stitching on the inside so what thread I have on my bobbin is going to be the thread that shows on the outside so if you're using um, a flatbed machine Bear that in mind because it's quite annoying if you realise suddenly that you have got the wrong colour on the outside. I'm leaving long threads at the beginning and the end because I'm going to bury and tie off my threads so we don't have a knot or any double thread or any bulky stitching on the inside of our bag. And I'm just stitching a quarter of an inch seam allowance.
definitely be careful when you get to those sides because you have got those seams that you'll be going over. They are offset, but you will have, they are still bulky, so just go slowly. You should be able to stitch over them quite easily. in your bag. Just make sure your flap is kept out of the way if you're going to have to if you're stitching from the inside because it's really easy to stitch over the flap which isn't a good look. I'm going to take my threads from the outside I'm just uh, sorry from the inside here and I'm just going to make a very a very tiny little knot um, so I'm only using two threads so that's the start and the end of that thread and I'm just making the tiniest of knots so just there and then I'm going to use my threading needle. I'm going to open my zipper pocket and I'm just going to pop my hand inside because I want to be able to push that needle through and take those threads inside. Now some people will say oh it's easier if you tie a knot inside it is sometimes I find it's quite it, getting inside just isn't easy so I'm going to do exactly the same um, on the outside so I'm just doing a double a double knot so and I'm going to thread up my self threading needle with both of those again hand in throughout inside through the pocket I'm going to use my needle and I'm going back in almost the second next hole along um, just to take those thread ends inside of the bag so they're kind of caught up in the lining and there's just nothing to see then it looks great so now what we need to do is to um, close that gap that we've got in the bottom of our lining so what we're going to do is we're going to put our hand in our pocket and we're going to sort of grab the bottom of our lining and pull it back out of that pocket so we're pulling the lining out of the hole that we left at the bottom of our pocket we should be able to match up those two edges on the side of our lining just pop a couple of clips in 
and we're just going to stitch along that side matching up the ends of the stitching that we already put in generally start probably half an inch in from where the end of my stitching was just so that I can kind of almost overlap a bit um, and then back stitching a couple of stitches to secure my threads coming along the bottom to So you can see there that I've completely stitched um, from this point here to this point here where I'd um, left that opening. So I can now push that back into my bag or push it back in through the pocket and then use your hands inside of the bag to push the lining out into the corners of the bag. It should fit beautifully. There will be no puckers or gathers. Um, I am going to just turn my little iron on and give that a press though because it is a bit scrunched where I've been pulling it through. Um, but you should find that you'll have a lovely, super, splendid fitted lining without any gathers or puckers or anything else like that. So I'm just giving it a quick press inside. The iron's not actually that warm yet. It doesn't take long to warm up, but sometimes I'm not very patient. Now our lining is sitting in there absolutely perfectly. I think that's wonderful. And we've st stitched up the hole at the bottom of our base. And now we're going to pull out those pocket linings. And these are the ones that we have that lovely fold in. I'm just gonna pull it out so that the corners are sitting together. And you can either stitch this with your sewing machine or you can do um, an invisible stitch, so a ladder stitch um, to close that up. I don't think it's necessary to do that. I always do it with my sewing machine because I think it's stronger. Um, and I stitch along the bottom. That's an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Matching those folded edges that we made. bottom corners of that pocket out so that they're sitting nice and square inside. You do have to do a, a lot of kind of groping around in the dark. Let's just get rid of all of those bits of thread that seem to be knocking about. Right, so there we go, and I'll come back to you and show you the next bit in a minute. 